What is up, YouTube? Well, I'm going to go in a little bit different direction today than wind and solar. I uh, just pulled this off my truck. Yesterday I was towing my 18-footer dovetail equipment trailer, 7,000 pound GVW. Anyway, this is the hitch off the back of my truck. You can see there. Got it off in the bumper over there on the trailer. We had a little bit of rot, as you can see here. It's pretty soft. Uh, and then we had it actually tear. This tore right there in the weight of the trailer. And this this did this when the trailer was empty, so this is pretty rotted. Pretty shitty steel. Well, I don't want to say that. I just want to say that it did tear a little bit and it is rotted away. It looks like it's been that way for a while. Um, so what I did was I took this off. I just ordered myself a nice aftermarket draw tight hitch. Uh, it's a 6,000 pound tongue. Or, yeah, 600 pound tongue, 6,000 pound toe, and um, 800 pound tongue, 10,000 pound toe with weight distribution. Which I don't ever really use weight distribution because I never exceed maybe 4,000 pounds with the trailer. Including the weight of the trailer, which the trailer weighs about 18, 1900 pounds. Empty. <clears throat> so, being that this is a this is a factory tow package that Ford had in, oops, had installed on the truck, and it was on there when I bought it. I bought the truck used, and with this factory tow package, the bumper mounts are incorporated in this hitch assembly. So here's one bumper mount hole there, and here's the two outer bumper mount holes. And same on this side, here's an inner, two outers, I'm missing the clip on that. And then the lower section right here where the step is, or where the bumper ball would go, but there was no place to put a bumper ball on this one, would be here and here. Um, before I bought this truck, there was some, there was minor, very minor rear end damage done. The, the chrome bumper was actually caved in here, let's go take a look at that. You can see here, it was tagged in a little bit. It's not straight at all, as you can see. So, and this bolt here I couldn't get out. It was actually tore off from the hitch assembly. So it just popped right off. And a little bit of rust going on, but whatever, cosmetic. No real structural support with this bumper anyway. It's just a prettiness, that's all that's for. But anyway. So, with the new draw tight hitch, there's no there's no way to mount the bumper to the truck. And as you can see here, I still have to remove I still have to remove these. I got this side kind of loosened up. This is the uh, factory tow package, the wings, I guess you would call them. And this is part of the frame rail. You can see this is where the factory bumper mounts would go this side and this side. This one I got to take off. This is part of the tow package. It's a three-piece. Factory tow package is a three-piece. So you have this piece, you have this piece, and then you have the hitch assembly. And it's all bolt-on. We're replacing it with a one-piece welded draw tight assembly. I have the spare tire off. Um, I got my, my Roush exhaust on here. Nice exhaust, nice exhaust note and everything. Um, I also have my fuel control, fuel pump controller module hanging there. And if anybody owns a Ford a truck and you've ever had a problem where you hit water or driving in rain and the truck shuts down on you, check this thing out. That's exactly what happens is the, the aluminum casing rots away and then you get moisture in there and it causes the system to short out and shut down. This thing is supposed to be mounted right here. Just like that, right on that cross tube above the spare tire. 
as you can see, <laughs> mine isn't mounted there anymore, so I'm going to have to replace that. I'm actually going to get some electric, electrical epoxy, and I'm just going to fill it. I'm going to fill it with like that solar panel stuff, which will work just fine. I used it before on other electronics that are some fully submerged in the water for about 10 years, and it still works fine. Anyway, um, so here's my 7-point trailer hitch connector. Here's the 4-port one, which I never use hate these connectors. These connectors suck. I'd much rather these 7-pin seven seven connectors. Um, so what I have to do is I have to fabricate a mount for my bumper. So what I'm going to do, keep it simple, I'm going to butcher this piece up since it's no good. I, I'm going to wait until I get the draw tight hitch first because I want to I want to see where my clearances are. What I'm going to do, because the bumper doesn't really serve any, there's real no structure to it. It's mostly an aesthetic piece. Um, because of the rear end, you have, I have six and a half feet of box and frame between the cab and the back of the truck. So a rear impact, I mean, it's a pickup truck. Any pickup truck that gets hit in the rear is going to, you're going to total the box. It doesn't really matter what you, what you do. But anyway, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to reuse some of this hitch. Everything from this point here, I'm going to cut off and keep all of this. And I'm going to cut it off here and keep all of this. So what I'll have essentially is my own custom factory mount. I know that's kind of like an oxymoron thing, but because all of this steel here is no good, I'm just going to cut. I'm going to cut this section out because this is where the draw title go, and then I'm going to reuse this bumper mount. and I'm going to bolt it on. I'm not going to use the original bolts that it came with because they were all rotted and fucked up anyway. So you can see here, this one's actually still in pretty good shape. But this was the ca the captive. Um, bolt system that they use. It's just two bolts welded to a flange, two shoulder bolts welded to a flange, and that would go in right here. And then you would get the, you would reach behind and bolt it on from that, from the frame side on those winglets that stick out of the frame. Not using that. I'm going to get my own, myself some nice grade 8 bolts and we'll do that because I called Ford, I called a couple different Ford dealerships, and to replace this with the factory tow package hitch assembly was around 500 bucks. No thanks. Uh, I depend on my truck and I depend on this because I don't put cargo in my truck. I, uh, I don't have the room. I have this slide out. Let's hide that license plate. You don't need to be seeing that. I have this homemade temporary, whatchamacallit, bed slide. So let's do a little, I'll do a little overview on this. All right, I'm gonna put the camera down and slide it out. So here you go. Here's my bed slide. It's not a permanent situation. It's one that I'm actually going to be uh, remanufacturing. I'm going to change it all to a steel frame, use a plywood deck, and yeah, that's pretty much it. I got a whole bunch of a uh, bunch of tools in there that I use. It goes all the way in there. I only pull it out this far. You can see it stops about halfway at the wheel well. Both sides. You can see I got all my my tools in there. They all sit nice. And then I got my nearly full-size Craftsman toolbox here. It's, a, it's the top of a toolbox. I was actually out here dicking around with my uh, the truck yesterday setting the air horns back up. Yeah, here's my my toolbox. So you can see I have all kinds of 
Got an 824 volt electric impact gun from Clutch. One battery's good, the other battery shit the bed on me. And I have my uh, Ryobi drill. 18 volt, I think these are. An impact screw gun. Ryobi drill socket set, or bit set. This is just the screw bits and hex bits, and torques and square bits and all that stuff. Yeah, these are 18 volt, right? Yeah, 18 volt lithium. I have two of these. One in the screw gun now and this one in here. And I have my messy ratchet or uh, wrench drawer, standard and metric. Those are Phillip or Pittsburgh tools. They're not all the greatest, but here's an AutoCraft. Working on uh, changing them all out. And then I got this messy drawer here. Allen wrenches, cable cutters, oil filter wrench. These things are pretty cool. These are the oil filter wrenches that go on the end of your uh, quarter or three eighths drive ratchet. And then when you go to loosen it, it closes. It's sticking out a little bit there, but when you turn it to back it out, the jaws, let's see if I can get it to do it, the jaws, now it's gonna make a fucking liar out of me. The jaws are supposed to close. Mm -hmm. like this. See how it spins? So it closes, and the, and the the more you turn it to turn it off or to back it out, the tighter it grabs on the filter. Sometimes there's tight places I got to get in there with this that I can't get in there with this. Even though this is a three-point adjustable oil filter wrench, it's just nice to have. Then now my socket drawer. Oh, there's a bad spray plug. That's all. I missed. But uh, yeah, I got my. Tap and die set here. I got half drive breaker bar or a cheater bar. 3 8 drive ratchet, half drive ratchet, and I got a quarter drive ratchet in here. Yeah, right here. And then my uh, quarter drive standard, quarter drive metric, 3 8 standard, 3 8 metric. I don't really use a lot of half drive anything when I'm doing this. Uh, spark plug sockets. I got a couple of them. A couple spark plug sockets in here. Uh, a couple of long extensions. And then I got some, uh, got my torque wrench, dead blow soft mallet, grease gun, battery terminal cleaner, some plumbing tools, miniature anvil, cable crimper. These come in handy for six gauge and up cables. Make it a lot easier than a 16 ounce hammer. Or is it 20 ounce? I have no idea. Oh, wait, here it is. Made in China. Oh, three pound. Okay. It works. I found it, so I use it. And I got my chemicals. My blue gloves for the blue glove club. Tape measure. Bolt measuring guide. Um, little Harbor Freight voltmeter. Clutch pulling tools for golf carts. Carb choke cleaner, battery terminal insulator, and turd protectant, and drill set. So, there's a quick little tour of toolbox. For anybody that's interested in what I got keeping my truck, then I got my line of spark plugs here. As you can see I carry spark plugs with me by the case. And I have all my wire terminals, fuses of every shape, size, and sort. All my wire terminals from number 10 wire, or number 10 size stud, all the way up to half inch stud, ranging from 26 gauge wire all the way up to four aught. I'm sorry, not four aught. Uh, number two gauge. Now, mini air compressor, jack, another container with shit in it, belts, and filters and oil, and there's my oil drain pan. And I got more. There's more wire terminals in here. There's uh, keys and such in there. And there's filters in this one, and bigger electrical components. All kinds of stuff. All kinds of stuff. Oh, here's my pair of 
dikes here. Let's get those put back in here. So I basically could do anything right out of my truck. Mechanical, plumbing, electrical, a little bit of carpentry. If I so need it to. Um, yeah, so that's a, that's a quick overview on the, on the truck and the bed slide. Everything's a little disorganized right now because I uh, just put this stuff back in. And I'm actually going to be rebuilding this bed slide because uh, it's, it's really hard to push in and out. I'm going to slide it back in here. It slides in nice though. I mean, it does, it fits right in there. It doesn't move. And I got my battery tester right here. So I got to get some, I got to get some lighting up in here. I need to light this up with LEDs along the, the top and side there. And then I keep various magnets in here for things. I stick all kinds of shit to them. That one on the side of the toolbox there. And this actually here is magnetized to the back of the side of the truck. I'm going to pull them there. It's a work truck, so it's supposed to be messy. Okay. Never falls. So that is <clears throat> that is basically what I'm going to do with the hitch. It's a little overview of my truck and toolbox. Um, yeah, I really don't have anything else to talk about here, other than yeah, that's it. There's my trailer. Alright guys, thanks for watching.